Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and welcome back to the channel and another episode of The Running News. If you're enjoying The Running News and the other content on the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when we launch the new videos. It also helps the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up like if you're enjoying it. Story number one today is the sad cancellation of the Prague Marathon. That one had been rescheduled for the 11th of October, but sadly the organisers have now pulled the plug. They had hoped to run the event, taking into account the slowing of virus numbers, but sadly that hasn't slowed down quickly enough. Those of you that may have had positions to run the Prague Marathon can roll that across to 2021 or 2022, depending on what might be better for you. Obviously with a marathon, you've just got to put in a lot of effort into the training and sometimes it's just not going to be possible for somebody to undertake those sort of miles and that kind of dedication. So a lot of planning is needed. That cancellation comes after the council had still not permitted large scale gatherings. As such, the organisers just found it impossible to be able to put on the event. I think they looked at several different solutions to try to do it, but alas, they came up empty handed. Just wasn't possible to minimise the risk enough. So this one sadly joins the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon and Berlin, of course, which is a sad sight to see. Those major marathons are ones that create a huge amount of interest all over the world. It was only this morning I was watching a film all about the Boston Marathon and the history, some of the winners that they've had over the many, many years. But I think we can all understand why these large-scale events are being cancelled. Let's hope that changes in the very near future. Story number two revolves around insoles. You know, I'm always fooling around with insoles in my running shoes, trying to eke a little bit of extra performance out of them, a little bit more comfort, sometimes a little bit more space in the toe box. While we've been at home recently, on the internet, I've been bombarded with adverts from Inerta. They've launched a new flagship insole called the PX1. They suggest their insole is 89% more shock absorbent than the leading competitor. And apparently 40% lighter as well. I was quite amazed actually the huge difference between the different insoles that you get in some shoes out the box. It seems like they give per millimeter measurements against their competitors so quite interesting. I wonder what it's made of. They didn't state as to which competitor that was. I've got a feeling it might be the Nike insoles. They seem to be quite standard now. I'm quite keen to test some of these out to see if their stats are actually true. Whether I can feel 89% more shock absorbency. <laughs> might be quite interesting to see if they can make some of the shoes that I found a little bit firmer perhaps. A little bit more palatable. Like that Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X for example. Could make it a little bit more cushioned. At $29.99. I'm intrigued to see if anybody else has tested these out. If you have got a pair of those, please let me know in the comments below. Do they live up to the stats? What results have you experienced using them? Story number three is about the Inspirational Games. So the Inspirational Games were a synchronized athletics event a little earlier in July. Athletes in Switzerland, Portugal, and Florida, amongst other countries, took part in a number of synchronized events at different athletic stadiums. There was the pole vault, triple jump, and some track events too. Obviously, weather conditions not permitting, they were quite different. I think there was some windy conditions in Florida, though it seemed very warm. Quite a bit cooler in Switzerland. I think there was about 12 Celsius difference between the two. I think for the track events, they had the starting gun in Switzerland, and what they did was then sync together the different runners in the different places. So the TV broadcast appeared as a real-time event. So it wasn't the temperature or weather conditions that caused controversy here. In the men's 200 meters event, there was quite an odd problem. Noah Lyles experienced an issue with the starting blocks being in the wrong place. I think they started him in the wrong lane, or at least it seemed to be in the wrong area of the track. He seemed to be on the opposite side of where he needed to be. I think he was like at the 400 meter start line. So he ended up running 15 meters less than the other two competitors. So he blasted through the finish line way ahead of the other guys. On the BBC commentary, Steve Cram said that there was clearly a problem. You know, something had gone amiss. He was just so far under the world record. I think he ran 18.90 seconds. 
but just minutes later it was removed as they saw the error. Obviously Usain Bolt's record set in 2009 was 19.19 seconds. Though problems aside, it was really great to see some fantastic men's and women's athletics going on. It's quite heartening to see people competing for stuff again. Might not be the natural sort of form of competition, but still a bit of a spectacle. Story four, there's a new carbon plate on running shoe. So on running a set to release a carbon plate shorter distance running shoe called the on cloud boom It's a good name so they utilize the familiar on cloud cloud tech system which appears i think in two layers actually they kind of sandwich that carbon plate in the middle it looks like the inclusion here is very much for rigidity on have stated that it's not for flex or anything like that. it's going to be quite a rigid carbon plate the shoe does seem to go for that rocker type design not only in the forefoot but also in the heel area as well it seems to be a really popular thing amongst manufacturers at the moment we've seen the implementation of that rocker in Saucony shoes hoka only only shoes of course and also some of the asics lineup too i'm really quite intrigued though by that rock in the heel as well it really does cut off they reckon this shoe's been in development for a couple of years now though the plate does appear to be a mix of tpu and carbon kind of like a carbon infused plate rather than just a straight out carbon plate the upper seems really really light as well they did give a 220 gram measurement of weight for the uk size 8 so it's certainly going to be similar in terms of some of the competitors who have recently released their carbon plate offerings. I think this shoe is really aimed at 10Ks or perhaps half marathons. Could be a little bit rigid for some. And it's going to retail around about £170. So a little bit over the Adi Zero Pro and a little bit below the Meta Racer from Asics. Quite interesting to see if anybody reviews this shoe. On running does seem to be a little bit of an acquired taste. Some people really love their shoes and other people don't get on with them at all. So be quite interesting to see how this one shapes up. If you're into on running, let me know in the comments below and if you're going to test this shoe out. That's all the running news for today. A musical interlude. What a mad cover. You guys all know Beat Disc, that was a big hit back in 1988. Mega Blast was another really popular hit as well from this album. I believe it was in a computer game, maybe Xenon 2, I think. It's one of the first computer games that had sort of sampled music in it, actual proper music. Oh, I used to spend many, many a day and night programming in tunes on Soundtracker on the Spectrum. Good days. Shake It's another good tune on here. Do check it out. Bomb the Bass, it was their debut album, Enter the Dragon. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video today, guys. I very much appreciate it. I had so many positive comments recently about the Adidas lineup. I'm still certain that this shoe's pink, though. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when we launch those new videos. It helps the channel a huge amount as well if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.